Hi, my name is Hunter Proven, and I'm the developer of uh, STR Match Finder. I'm going to show you how you can see your STR matches from uh, public YSeq projects if you're a YSeq customer. Um, I've logged in. This is my brother-in-law, Gibi. Um, we tested alpha beta STRs for him. So here, view my STR results. You'll see these are your STRs. And down at the bottom, there's this new link, Phylogeographer STR Match Finder. Compare your YSTRs to public YSeq and FTDNA STR projects. Click it. These are the list of the public projects uh, on YSeq. And uh, when you click that link, it automatically loads the STRs of everyone who's joined a public project. And then uh, it shows you your STR matches. Uh, not too many people that are male line relatives of, of my brother-in-law, who's from Georgia, Imereti region, uh, not very many of those people have done any testing uh, or, or they haven't tested very much with uh, YSeq and they aren't in public projects. But, so he doesn't have any close relatives, but you see he shows up as his own match because he's joined a public project. Uh, all these other guys are very distantly related. Um, if you click on one of your matches, it tells you the name, the email address of the person that manages that group, so you can contact them. Um, if if Gibi were to have any matches with a uh, uh, lower genetic distance, and if they happen to have any of the share any of his rare alleles, then you would see the the rarity indicated in shades of red so uh, uh, to give you an example of how that works I'm gonna load another data source this is how you can just um, type enter in whatever STRs you'd like to query on but if you but let's say you've got a, a project uh, of external uh, STR data um, and you want to load that this is a fake project that I created uh, I took my DNA and then I randomly changed it in different places to make all these fake people uh, to show you how it works. So you can enter this data source if you just copy paste the whole thing, starting at the top left and go to the all the very right and then go all the way to the bottom, whatever last row you want, copy it, go here to tabular data and just paste it in there. Oh, it worked, 43 additional samples. Okay, now let's see. I'm uh, 454419, let's see. There, it just loaded all of my SCRs. Um, and who are my matches? Okay, so first uh, it's showing myself, and then it's saying, oh, Hunter's second cousin. Um, I don't have a second cousin that did a Y-DNA test, so I just changed my DNA a little bit and said that it's my second cousin. And then it shows that, uh, oh, oh, by the way, these are these are the order in which you're seeing these matches is, uh, it's ranked by the mutation rate log sum. And what this means is it lo looks at the differences in each STR uh, uh, between what your match has and what you have. And uh, it uses a log score that takes the mutation rate into account. So if you differ um, from somebody on an STR that has a high mutation rate, then it's not going to affect your mutation rate log sum as much as it would if you differed with somebody with a lower mutation rate. Um, and uh, the default view is the the, the order of the STRs you see here is not the standard order from that was either in my project that I imported or from uh, uh, FTDNA projects. This is the order uh, ranked by the mutation rate. So the, the STRs that are appearing in the beginning uh, are, are uh, more stable. And CDY is the most unstable of the first 37. And that's why it's at the end. Uh, so what I can see is that me and my first cousin 
have this uh, red under DYS447. It's because our allele is very rare. Um, and I made this fake Flemish man that shares two of our relatively rare alleles, uh, our DYS385 and our DYS390. Um, and so you can see that uh, I've got I've got matches from uh, public YSeq projects, and then I've got matches matches that s start with a, the ID starting with a T and an underscore uh, is the how I'm representing the matches from tabular data sources that were externally added. Um, oh yeah, and let's look at I made I made um, I made one guy called Fakey Tadeus. I tweaked his STRs. Let's load his STRs. I'm going to look at his 67 marker matches. And I'm going to increase the genetic distance match limit. Check this out. He's very distantly related to everyone. Uh, but the interesting thing is his closest match, uh, Fakey Smirnoff, has, while he has a genetic distance of 24, that's uh, absolute genetic distance, I just add up all the differences on, on every STR, and that's the total. Uh, he has a very high genetic distance to him, but look, these relatively stable markers, he shares the very rare value, uh, rare, very rare allele of Fakey Tadeus. Uh, that's this DYF 395 and DYS 531. Um, the rarity, the, like why is it red? Uh, what does it mean that an allele is is rare? It's everything is relative. When I say uh, when STR match finder shows a shade of red, this shade of red corresponds to four to eight percent of the matches within the cutoff that were queried on have this allele. That's what rarity means. It's relative to it's computed on uh, the people that are within the genetic distance cutoff that you searched on. So if I change the genetic distance cutoff, the colors are going to change. See, now I've changed the genetic distance cutoff so that I'm only looking at people within genetic distance 30 uh, at 67 STRs. Um, so now their 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 rare their rare alleles are not as rare anymore because uh, the total number of matches is less. So how many people out of like 12, two out of 12 people have this allele? That's why it's in the, uh, that's why it's, it's uh, this other shade. Okay. So yeah, that's how you can use STR match finder. There's uh, you can, you can, you can parse if you have data in this format that is uh, like the standard standard order used by uh, family tree DNA projects. You could just copy this row and paste it in here, str paste. There, it parses it. This is what it looks like. Oh, I'll just to show you, I, I, you can reset if you want it to just clear, but now I'll parse it and you can see, yeah, it actually loaded everything. Uh, so that's easier than typing it in manually. But if you're, in a, if you're a YC customer, you don't need to do any of that. Your STRs are already loaded in. Okay, I hope you're able to use this tool to advance your haplogroup research. Uh, join, make use, STRs are so powerful. You don't, we don't have enough money to pay for every single person to do, um, to do like a whole genome sequence test. But you can look, if you're a haplogroup researcher, look at the people in your public project, see who's going to break a bottleneck. That's how you figure out where your ancestors may have been living in the past. You, ha you, you break the bottleneck and then you find more children and you look at where all the children trace their male line descent. And then that's, that's how you can get an idea of where your ancestors may, may have been living. Okay, thanks.